Neville Ravikant says, leave me in any country where English is spoken. I will become rich in five to 10 years because I've learned how to become rich. Neville Ravikant is a successful entrepreneur, angel investor, and influential thinker who is very popular in the world of startups, investing, and personal growth. His net worth is $60 million. He was born in New Delhi, but he moved to the U.S. with his family as a child. Today, I will share a guide to wealth. If you are stuck in a middle-class trap, where you are trapped in the middle income range, and because of inflation, you are slowly getting stuck in this swamp, then this video is going to help you a lot. After watching this video, you will get a roadmap to how to become successful. So without wasting time, let's start the chapter wise. Part one, wealth. Chapter one, understand how wealth is created. How is money made? The first idea that the Nables believe is that money is not made from hard work. In our society, it is often said that hard work is very important to earn money. The Nables believe that if money is made from hard work, then the person who works in a restaurant for 12 to 14 hours or construction laborers who work in the scorching sun are richer. This is a big flaw in our system that to become rich, you don't need hard work. So if you ask, what should we do? The navels don't say that hard work is bad. They are against directionless hard work. The navels say that getting rich is about knowing what to do, who to do it with and when to do it. If you want to become rich, then first find out what you have to do in life and with whom and most importantly when. If you don't know what you have to do, then the most important thing you have to do is to figure out what you have to do. The navels say that you shouldn't do hard work without direction because it only wastes your time. If you have decided that you want to do business, then the first thing you should do is which business should I start? After that comes hard work. But before we start, shall we do an exercise comment on this? I am wealthy. Just, just comment. I am wealthy. And once I see that comment, I'll give it a heart. I will share some tweets with you, which Nabal Ravikant has shared on Twitter. And it has been explained very well in this book as well. Tweet. No one seek wealth, not money or status. Wealth is having assets that earn while you sleep. Money is how we transfer time and wealth. Status is your place in the social hierarchy. Navel says, focus on making wealth. Don't worry about money or fame. Wealth means your asset, which earns money for you, even when you are sleeping. Tweet, no. Two, you are not going to get rich renting out your time. You must own equity, a piece of a business to gain your financial freedom. You can't become rich by doing a job or renting out your time. If you want to achieve financial freedom, then you need ownership. As long as you work for others, you will be fulfilling their dreams. Tweet, no. Three, you will get rich by giving society what it wants, but does not know yet how to get it at scale. You can become rich when you can give society something that society doesn't know how to get. Like Ola gave us a taxi booking service. Facebook gave us a platform to stay connected with friends and family. So focus on the needs of society. Your chances of success will increase if you can sell it in massive numbers. Tweet, no. Four, learn to sell, learn to build. If you can do both, you will be unstoppable. You should know how to sell or know how to make something. If you know both, then no one can stop you from being successful. All the successful people here have built something which they are able to sell. Tweet, no. Five, arm yourself with specific knowledge, accountability, and leverage. This is the most important quote. Specific knowledge means the knowledge or skill you have which you have learned from experience. Accountability means taking responsibility and leverage means using a tool, technique, or technology to get your work done. So Noel is saying that you should have specific knowledge and take responsibility for your life. And at the same time, you should know how to get work done. Like if you are the main character of a game, which is on a mission, then you should have specific knowledge and your goal is to make a team, which is absolutely dangerous. They don't leave anyone to complete their mission. And along with that, the tools available to you, that is weapons, use them well so that not a single bullet is wasted. So the chances of completing your mission will increase a lot if you focus on these three things. So from chapter one, how wealth is created, I learned that if you want to make wealth, then you can never trade time to earn wealth. You have to focus on building specific knowledge, which can't be taught by schools or universities. If they start teaching you, then anyone can replace you. Along with specific knowledge, you should know how to use leverage. In business, leverage comes from money, people, or products that can't copy your competition. Now let's come to chapter two. Find and build specific knowledge, how to find what your specific knowledge is going to be and how to build it. The first tweet of this chapter is specific knowledge cannot be taught, but it can be learned. No one can teach you specific knowledge, but you can learn it. For example, sales skills are a type of specific knowledge. 
We often say that this person has a natural talent for sales. When you meet such a high performing salesperson, their personality is so good that you feel that you can't reach their level. But it's not like that person has learned it from a secret school. Navel says that in every person's DNA, there can be a genetic code for gaining specific knowledge so that it can be easy for him to achieve mastery in a specific field in comparison to others. But you can also build the skill. For example, if we talk about the high performing salesman, it is also possible that this person has faced many rejections when he used to do sales calls. But as he focused on improving himself and started learning from his mistakes and started understanding the customer better, his sales also improved a lot. And it is possible that it took him four to five years to do all these processes, even more than that. So Navel says that you should look for a job that you enjoy doing, but people think that, how do you do it? If you like gossiping or interfering in people's lives, then you can become a journalist. If you are good at sports, then you can gain specific knowledge. Navel liked reading books and learning about technology since childhood. That's why he made his career in tech. And because he liked reading books, he was able to read and understand any theory faster than others. And because of these skills, he got a lot of help in life. Chapter three, play long-term games with long-term people. Navel says that all the returns in life, whether in wealth, relationship, or knowledge come from compound interest. How much wealth are you going to make? How are your partners and friends going to be? Or how much specific knowledge do you have? All this will come from compound interest. Take the example of any successful businessman. Whatever business he has made, people trust him. That company is heavily invested because of this. Today's results are due to years of right action. All of them have long-term perspective. In this chapter, the authors talked about how to have a long-term mindset and not ruin your life for short-term gains. No matter what field you are in, it will take time to reach a certain level. Now let's come to chapter four, take on accountability. In this chapter, Naval's idea is that you have to take accountability. That is, you have to take responsibility for your life. If you don't take responsibility, then your actions and decisions won't be good. For example, you have a work deadline. If a normal person wants to finish a work, then he will finish it on the deadline. But Navel says that you have to take that work deadline so seriously that your life depends on it. When you bring this mindset in you, then you will do that project with your heart and try to give your best. So whatever your life situation is, take responsibility for your goals. No one is going to come to help you. And for your goals, you have to focus on becoming such a person that people say that this is his natural talent. But they don't know the reality that how hard you have worked and how much discipline you have brought in you. Chapter 5. Build and buy equity in a business. As we have already learned that we cannot become rich by trading our time. So in this chapter, Naval's idea is either you build your own business or invest in those businesses that are doing well. These are the true paths to financial freedom. Chapter 6. Find a position of leverage. Imagine that you have got a task that you have to lift a very heavy stone. Now you have two options. Number one, you can use your strength and lift that stone with your hands, but this is not a smart way. Number two, you can use a smart method. That is, you can use a lever by which you can lift that stone by applying less force. Let's take an example of financial leverage. For example, you have to start a business for which you need $20,000. So you have two options. Either you save your money for years and collect $20,000 and then start your business, or you can take financial leverage and take a loan from the bank and start your business from that. And you can earn more interest from your business. Let's take another example of leverage. Let's assume that you have to build a website for your new business. Now you have two options. Either you learn how to build a website or get it outsourced. Here you will save months of time. So using leverage is a very important skill which gives you time freedom. Chapter seven, get paid for your judgment. In this chapter, Naval Ravikant's idea is that you have to focus on being so skilled that people will pay you to hear your judgment. Naval says that he wants the technology to work for him and he wants the decision making to work for him. If a person is good at choosing stocks and his selected stocks are performing well consistently every year, then you can imagine how many people would be ready to pay him for his judgment. If you gain specific knowledge of this level, then you won't have to hustle for time management or every day. Now let's come to chapter eight. Prioritize and focus. Naval shares a quote. Value your time at an hourly rate and ruthlessly spend to save time at that rate. You will never be worth more than you think you are worth. He believes that every person should set an hourly rate and get their work outsourced as much as possible. For example, when Naval was starting his career, he set his per hour rate to $5,000. So whatever daily routine work like fixing something at home, cooking, fixing a car, or fixing a window, he used to get it outsourced. 
His family members used to think that Nabal is wasting his money because we all know how expensive everything is in the US. But Nabal's argument is that if I have to do something and its value is less than $5,000 per hour, then I will get it outsourced. If its value is equal or more than that, then I will prioritize it and put my 100% in it. So focus on your high value task and get all the other tasks outsourced as much as possible. That means outsource most of the work that is less than your per hour rate and focus on the high paying task and focus on getting more returns. This saves you time and you can earn more money. Let's come to chapter nine, find work that feels like a play. In this chapter, Novol says that find work that is easy for you, but difficult for others. And the work that you don't realize the value of time while doing can be art, technology, or any other task. If you can convert this strength into business or acquire other businesses, then your chances of becoming rich increase a lot. Chapter 10. How to get lucky. Naval believes that luck doesn't exist. If there are 1,000 parallel universes out of which you want to become wealthy 999 times, then the factor of luck goes out of the equation. Naval says that you should become a character, a product, or a business where luck comes to you. His quote is, become the best at what you do. Redefine what you think until it is true opportunities will seek you out. Luck becomes your destiny. If you become the best at your work and keep improving yourself, then opportunities will come to you and being lucky will be a byproduct for you. Now let's come to the last chapter in this well section. Chapter 11, be patient. Navel says that your efforts are compounded. So if a person starts building specific knowledge from today and uses leverage at the same time, eventually a time will come when you will start seeing the returns of your efforts. Naval says that all the people who were in his network 20 years ago and who people used to say have a lot of potential and do a lot of hard work, all of them are successful today. Naval says, be impatient about your action, but be patient about the result. The result of your efforts will definitely come. So let's come to the conclusion of this video. Today, I gave you a chapter wise summary of part one, wealth from the book, The Almanac of Naval Ravik. These are the key takeaways. First of all, find out your natural talent or skill or in which field you want to build specific knowledge. After that, you have to do hard work. When you reach a level, you have to use leverage, which is a tool where force multiplies and focus on becoming such a person who has a specific skill, who knows how to use leverage and who is very patient about the result. If you become such a person, then wealth will automatically come to you. I hope you liked this video. If you have learned any new concept from this video, then do like this video. But before you implement this into real life, I am collecting donations in the form of subscribers to fund the next video.